I'm Craig Eason at Lloyd's List and we're continuing our look at the issues facing the Somali waters and other waters around the world. With me is Robert Young Pelton. He's the publisher of Somali Report, one of the few accessible looks into the country, I would say. How are you seeing the developments in Somalia? You've been there recently, you've got a number of contacts very close to the ground there. So what can you say about what's going on there and how that's impacting piracy? Well, Somalia is obviously an interesting place because it has so much going on, not just piracy, of course. And Somalia Report is, is similar to what we've done in Iraq and Afghanistan, where we only work with people inside the country to explain what's going on to a Western audience. When we focus in on piracy, we don't have an agenda. We're not trying to defeat piracy. We're not trying to understand it. We're just trying to document what's going on. And what we're finding is that pirates are having a rough time, which which clashes sometimes with the industry's view of things because they've just now got their statistics ready and they've just now got their programs and their budgets ready for approval. But uh, piracy probably has seen its zenith. Uh, last year was a great year for piracy. Uh, now you're seeing a lot less ships, a lot less hostages. Uh, pirates are sitting on inventory, to use a retail term. Uh, they're trying to gouge more than they were before. Uh, they're being more violent and sometimes deadly towards hostages, which is obviously changing the model. Uh, they're also welching on deals. I mean, literally written deals are now being sort of ripped up as the plane is coming to drop the money. Uh, most recently, the Blida had uh, been negotiated out to 2.6 million, uh, literally 48 hours, and as the plane was on its way, they swapped, Garad was the pirate, uh, swapped the negotiator, who then demanded 4.6 million or, or take it or leave it. Uh, that kind of thing destroys the, the beautiful little business they've built up. If you can't trust a pirate and you can't drop money and guarantee to get your crew back, then you don't do business with them. You've used the word sweet spot regarding four and a half million dollars. That's the optimum price that you think a Somali is looking for when it comes to a ransom. Well, what's happened uh, since 2004, 2005, they, they've pushed up ransoms. They've kept pushing them up and up and up. And what happens is that pirates are not sophisticated. They look at, uh, let's say, the Sirius Star. They look at some of the, uh, the Samho uh, Dream where they see these huge VLCCs, these huge super tankers bringing in nine, 12, 13 million dollars, and they don't know how high up is. And what's happened is that 4.5 is about as much as the insurance companies want to pay because above that, the, the premiums rise dramatically, and above that, the negotiations take longer. You're, instead of 90 to 60 days, you're seeing people sitting for eight months on a ship. Now, if a ship's taken out of circulation that long and those mariners are abused for that long and that cargo is not being delivered to the customers for that long, it now begins to be a write-off. So I think we're seeing the peaking of uh, ransom payments. We're talking about pirates in a very loose term, and I think it's only recently that we've started to see a certain amount of romantic gloss removed from our discussions over piracy. But who are they? Who are the people that you've met in Somalia and Puntland and Somaliland? Who are these people that we're talking about? Well, as you saw in my presentation, we actually documented every pirate in Somalia with their phone number, their location, the, the unit they work with. Uh, pirates are in three levels. You've got the smart guys, the original guys who are now investors. They've taken ransoms and they put them back into crews. Uh, you've got the commanders, the sea commanders, the guys that go out there and actually jump on these ships and grab them and then bring them back. And then you've got the holders, which are sort of your dumb nephew that can't get a job. You just make them sit on a ship and pay them a minimum wage. So. You've got various types of pirates, but what we're seeing is the number of pirates have been reduced. The number of safe havens for pirates have been reduced, not by any Navy effort, but by actual locals telling them at the point of a gun to get out of town, and obviously there's been shootouts. And then we're seeing a lack of success. We're seeing the probability of a pirate attack succeeding dropping in half to something like 12%, which is, which is very scary because that means 90% of those things fail, which means you've got money invested in all these crews and they're not bringing back the goods. So we're seeing tough times for pirates. We've seen Somalia compared to the last Wild West. Mm. And we've heard from yourself about how some of the local leaders are getting to the point where they're pushing the, the pirates out of the towns. Is right. this likely to increase and is this the only way that we're going to see piracy in the coastline of Somalia actually defeated? 
Well, the, the Navy is an extraordinary machine, but they don't go on land. Sometimes they'll, they'll try to go close to shore, but typically they don't want to get involved in the politics of Somalia on land. But what we saw was it was a moral degradation of the pirates' mission. You know, initially we saw them being sort of championed as Robin Hoods, defenders of the seas, preventers of toxic dumping. Uh, only 6% of attacks are on poaching ships. What we're seeing now is a lifestyle and a criminality that the locals don't want, they don't like. Uh, they, they see uh, prostitution, they see alcohol, they see drugs, they see violence, and they want those people out of their small communities. So they're actually pushing these pirates into very remote areas where it's not pleasant to work. And what we're seeing is sort of a lack, sort of an apathy by the outside community who has multiple conferences and speeches on defeating piracy, but actually won't get on the ground and talk to these elders and say, how can we help you get rid of the pirates? If the pirates can't eat, they can't sleep. If their parents yell at them, they're not going to be pirates. And that's where the solution starts. Mr. Pelton, thank you very much. This is Craig Eason for Lloyd's List.